And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, January 26th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. Secretary of the Interior Ken Salazar has announced that the court order process of notifying individuals of their right to participate in the three point four billion dollar Cobell settlement are underway. This formal notice process is a key step that precedes the court's formal review and we hope approval of the settlement. Congress approved the settlement on November 30th, 2010, and the President signed the Claims Resolution Act of 2010 on December 8th, 2010. The settlement will resolve the long-running and highly contentious class action lawsuit regarding the U.S. government's trust management and accounting of individual American Indian trust accounts. Now is the time for those who want to know their rights under the Cobell Settlement to call the 1-800 number or go to the IndianTrust.com website. Class members all over the country are receiving detailed information about their legal rights and options via U.S. mail. Information will also be provided through an extensive media campaign which includes Native American print media, television and radio ads, and online advertising. People who know or think they're eligible should go to www.indiantrust.com or call the toll-free number at 1-800-961-6109 to get more information, and we'll put that piece of information on the URL here so you can get that as well. In a move to increase patient care, the Cherokee Nation has announced plans to expand the use of newly developed technology that will link patient records between tribal health care centers and uh, W.W. Hastings Hospital. The tribe will join other health systems in Oklahoma to participate in a national launch of an incentive program to use electronic health records. The launch is part of an effort with U.S. Health and Human Services and part of the Medicare and Medicaid EHR incentive programs of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. Across the U.S. healthcare system, systems are embracing the benefits of electronic health records and other forms of uh, health IT or internet technology. Although Cherokee Nation has been working for several months to link records across their entire system, this month marks the first time hospitals and eligible health care providers can register and qualify for the incentive programs with the federal government. This program is accelerating the transformation of health care that was already happening, moving the country closer to a nationwide interoperable electronic patient record system. The President of the National Congress of American Indians, Jefferson Keel, will call on leaders to act on a new era in U.S. tribal relations during the State of the Indian Nation's address tomorrow. Following Keel's address, Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska will deliver a congressional response. The event will be held at the Museum in Washington, D.C., which will also be web cast live on the organization's website at www.ncai.org at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Central Time. The speech will reflect on the state of Indian country heading into 2011 and outline the key priorities for the federal government to consider when working to uphold the federal trust responsibility. Jefferson Keel is serving in his second term as president of NCAI and the lieutenant governor of the Chickasaw Nation. The event will be hosted at the Museum's Night Television Studio in Washington, D.C. and will be webcast live on ncai.org and broadcast to radio stations via the Native Voice One Network and Native American Calling as well. Museum is how you say that. Museum. <laughs> Low income students may be getting smaller grants, and newly disabled might have to wait longer for their benefits. And just about every politician is going to get an earful from the local PTA if school aid gets whacked. Republicans are finding it's one thing to issue a blanket promise to cut spending on entirely and an entirely different matter when you actually take the scissors to cut off one dollar of every six spent by agencies like the IRS, the FBI, NASA, and the National Park Services. Federal layoffs will be unavoidable, unavoidable the White House has warned. That's the real-world impact of House Republicans' campaign promises to cut $100 billion from the budgets of domestic agencies. Next week, they plan to vote on a resolution setting appropriations for the rest of the year 
at 208 pre-recession levels in place before President Barack Obama took office. The vote will be largely, largely symbolic. The actual cuts would have to be made in a appropriations bill that have to be uh, have to clear a 60 vote hurdle in the Senate where Republicans hold only 47 seats. Some Republicans, especially in the Senate, may join Democrats in uh, balking when they actually see the size of the cuts uh, necessary. Newly elected Republicans in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the Dakotas are sure to feel major political pressure over big cuts looming for the low income Home Energy Assistance Program, known as LIHEAP, which provides uh, home heating subsidies to the poor. Former Wisconsin Congressman David Obi says it's going to mean a lot of people who aren't able to pay their heating bills are going to have no way to heat their homes and they're going to have to either eat less or see the doctor uh, less often. Pell grants for college students from low-income families will be cut by more than $1,000 from the current $5,500 maximum grants. A cutback in housing sub subsidies will mean that hundreds of thousands of people won't see their Section 8 vouchers renewed, and a $1 billion, 24% cut to the historically underfunded Indian Health Service would reduce critically needed health care in some of the most impoverished places in the whole country. A 20-year-old Lodge Grass woman who pled guilty to theft after driving off in a Yellowstone County uh, deputy's patrol car with his drug dog inside has been sentenced. U.S. District Judge Jack Shainstrom sentenced Kayla Roundstone last week to 10 months in federal prison. Prosecutors say the deputy responded to a call of an injured man in a ditch on U.S. Highway 87 near Pryor Road on the Crow Indian Reservation on April 5, 2009. The man said he was assaulted by a group of people who had driven off, leaving Roundstone and him behind. While the deputy was tending to the man, Roundstone drove off in the patrol car. Uh, and that's the end of the story. Ten months for going for a joyride. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has signed off on an air quality plan for the Gila River Indian community that the agency says serves as a model for other tribes. The South Central Arizona tribe spent 12 years developing and implementing the plan that covers dust emissions, the storage and handling of metal cleaners, and open burning, among other things. The plan includes ordinances for local business, a permit program, civil and criminal enforcement, air monitoring, and an emissions inventory. Pacific Southwest EPA Administrator Jared Blumenfield says the tribe is the first to accept such a high-level responsibility for air quality on their reservation. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for showing up and come back again soon. Miigwech.